TNYCD. There's nothing you can't do. There we go. How's everybody today? I didn't have time to do my hair because well, it was my day off. My father. Hi, Cindy. Uh, I've been doing these pennies, right? I got a sack of a thousand pennies, and I've been working on them. This is what three shows or four or some damn thing. Several hours into it, and we got uh, that many left, and this pitiful amount done. How long does it take? One fellow asked me, "How much time does it take to go through, you know, a bunch of pennies?" How long do you spend looking at a penny? Well, you spend long enough to decide, you know, if it's something or not. Uh, is really what it is. There is no time limit, right? You can't really uh, do the math to come up with exactly how many seconds to go through how many coins in a bag. Uh, just do your thing, and every now and then you find something, and every now and then you, you get scuffed. A while, if you're actually looking. Yeah, good lord, it takes forever. I thought you were saying tiny. Tiny Cindy Dixon. No, there's nothing you can't do. Uh, I've been working on a slogan. And one thing I always talk about is, you know, there's nothing you can't do. And that's what TNYCD. Tiny Cindy. Yeah, that kind of works, I guess. So I'm working on that, uh, you know, that million view video. Maybe I'll get something with that. But now it's just, we'll throw it up there. Maybe it'll be a good t-shirt. Who knows? Um, Chad Cernio was saying, oh, you'd be a good motivational speaker. Well, I don't know about that. I just like looking at pennies. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? There they are. Okay, we got a hunt. Uh, the fellow says, how long does it take? As long as it has to, really. There's no time limit. You're not in a hurry. That's the beauty of it. Uh, there's no pressure. Now, you get into... Uh, you know, operating a business, things change because you get, you know, people on the clock and that's a different story. But for the most part, coin collecting is a hobby. Right? There are more hobbyists out there than there are dealers or coin shops or you know, people that try to make a living out of this. It is difficult to make a living out of just hunting pennies. But it can give you a bonus. It can give you a boost. A little mm shove in the right direction. There are people that have found some really nice stuff doing this. Uh, but they don't tell you how many coins they went through or how many how long it took to find that, you know, hundred dollar, a thousand dollar coin. This one I'm gonna keep. It's got a couple of die chips. They call this one bugs in the wheat. There you go. Because you know it's a wheat, it's a crop. Every now and then you're gonna get a bug. A little bit right here, a little die chip. What's on this side? This side looks pretty good so far. Alright. We'll keep that one. Hit the like. Oh yeah, everybody hit the like. We don't we don't, we don't smash the or hit the don't like. Either one's good. What do you got here? Okay. We gotta show this one. Part of uh you know being good at hunting these rolls, hunting these sacks of pennies, is knowing what to look for. Right? And you're gonna find stuff that's good and stuff that's not good and stuff that's what is it? Okay, right here you see the bottom of that S is something. Kind of filled in on the left side you see that raised bit you know you see an edge and if i shadow this just right you'll be able to see the difference in in texture on the inside of the s on the bottom and what happened there is the mint mark punch which is something akin to a pen and the guy puts it on the die and hits it with a hammer and if he hits it hard enough he's going to bottom it out all right because that s has relief. It's got a little bit of height to it. And if you sink it deep enough into the coin, you're going to get to the bottom of the little S on their little punch. And that's what you get right here. A lot of people say, is this, is this a double die? Is this a, no, no, nothing to do with a double die. But that's what it is. You're going to see this stuff and you're going to be able to recognize it uh, in order to hunt these, hunt these coins effectively. But you're going to find everything really, but it takes time to do it. Well, let's get back to well, that's a little too too far out there. Let's come down a little right about I should mark this with a pen. There we go. Um hundreds, hundreds of hours you can spend doing this. People just do it full time. Uh, I get into these uh, fits where I'll just take a week or two and just hunt those hunt all those memorials I got over here. Uh, 
it can take you many, many years of doing this, and you might find not very much. But then you can pick up a bag tomorrow or a box tomorrow and find something really slick. Well, that was in pretty good shape. Yeah, it's got some shine to it, a little bit of luster around the edges. Oh, but lost it there. There we go. And it's in decent shape for 54S. It'll go in the uh, giveaway bag. Bill says, I got some older foreign coins and coppers and silver. Outstanding. Uh, a lot of those foreign coins, if you know what you're doing, if you know what to look for, you can find stuff in those foreign grab bags. Uh, people don't know what they are quite often. Geez, you got back before the mid-60s, and a lot of countries had uh, foreign a lot of the foreign coins had silver in them. You know, the Balboas, uh, Canadian, oh, nickel, uh, dimes, quarters, halves, the older nickels. I mean, you're going way back on the nickels. Uh, a lot of the Middle East, Eastern countries, you see, I got all that oil wealth of putting out coins in silver left and right. Oh, that looks unremarkable. What was that one? 1941. And it's probably VF. Upper head. Got some two and three pence older silver. Three pence. Didn't we give one away the other couple of weeks ago? Uh, it was like New Zealand or something. Oh, this one's wrecked. That's a shame. Kill it. Uh, but it's out there. And you can find silver. Uh, sometimes the dealers, right? They don't have time to go through, you know, a sack of 100 pounds of foreign coins. Somebody, people bring it in. Okay, yeah, I can give you, I can give you 20 bucks for all of it. You know, and they take it because well, people selling coins to a coin dealer probably they're desperate. Uh, that wants to be looked. That looks squished. I want to buy the other day. You know, I mean, people buy get these coins from wherever they get it. They uh, somebody passes away, they find it in a basement, they buy a house or a storage unit, and here's stuff. And they don't really know what it is, but geez, you know. It's probably value. Let's take it to a coin dealer, see what we can get. And they take it to the coin. That's squish right there. They take it to the coin dealer. And the coin dealer doesn't have much time to pick it over. They didn't give them something for it a lot of times. You recognize one or two things. Okay, maybe there's something there. And you put it up in the, uh, you know, two for a dollar bin. And that's where you can find, you can find some good stuff if you hunt. But again, it takes time. There are 925 sterling and 50%. Outstanding bill. See, Bill's got a Bill's got a brain when it comes to some of those foreign coins, so he's got an advantage. That's what all this is. Um, we talk about it, we show people what to do and how to find it, and it's an advantage. It's a, it's a competitive advantage to getting out there and cherry picking this stuff. Uh, dealers, they're gonna spend their time pretty much with the high dollar stuff. Get it. You know, flip it over as soon as you can, because that's that's where the money is, right? The big flip it over so you can pay the light bill, uh, the phone bill, the internet bill, whatever else, advertising, staff, lease. Can you like this? Got an 18.99 half pice. Pice is the, yeah, India copper. How big are those? I don't know. I'm not too big on uh, on foreign coin. I do okay with some Canadian stuff. Yeah, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not up on. Oh, that's got trout on it. But the more you know, the better opportunity is out there to pick these things up for. I mean, a song a lot of times. Uh, I picked up Canadian large cents, an entire set for. I mean, a couple of hundred bucks, and dude, it had everything in there. Okay, we'll get a lamination here. All right, here's a, here's what I'm talking about. That's not so much doo-doo, that's a lamination. Yeah, it's got doo-doo on it, too. So right across here, you can realize this is not a damaged coin. This is uh, an issue with the planchet. That's what you call a lamination error. That's split all the way across. All right, that goes in the cup. We'll keep that around. But it's all about patience. You know, it takes time to learn all this stuff. But each step along the way, everything you pick up, you know, you stick it in your head up here. Pull it out when you need it. And get the focus right. We'll be good. 
How are you doing, Tim? Tim Jarrett just joined us. We're looking at some crud that's going and talking about how long it takes. Uh, how long, if you put it in full time, give it, you know, hardcore effort, you know, after work, weekends, days off, uh, times instead of watching TV, you learn about coins, uh, read books, articles, get the magazines and, and all that good stuff. Go to the library, get every single book they got, probably build like five of them. If that, one will be the red book. And just just hump the information. It, it's still going to take you a couple of years to learn enough that uh, you're able to get out there and you know hit the flea markets or coin shops or, or eBay or different sales sites and start to pick those cherries. But you know, if, if you focus on just one series, say wheat pennies, you can do it a whole lot faster and get your hunting underway right now. But it comes down to your personal ability, uh, how much time you're able to put in. A break. I think it might be, but it's a pretty minor one. Yeah, that's a little break right here in the weeds. And again, it's another form of bugs in the weeds. From, from right up here to right about there, it's a, a bit of a break. See, the weeds kind of change from being weeds to being a blob. Anything on that side? What's this? Slobber? That might be slobber. Yeah, that's me talking. Yay, it's raining. What is that? 1958D? That's a common year. Oops, lost it. That's a common year to get the dye chips and such. There's John Smelko. Those older large Canadian cents are worth money a lot of times. Uh, if you can get them in better grades, better condition, they've got woodies, they've got errors. Uh, varieties just the same as US coins and dude nobody's collecting the darn thing you can get them the rare ones in good shape for a darn good price uh, 1858 the first year they made them you can get those in uh, you know mid grade mid, mid grade range uh, for for 75 to 100 bucks and I think they're survival is you know a couple of thousand they're just not out there and you can pick them up for a song you can almost pretty much have your pick of the litter and put together a, a magnificent set if you want to expect if you want to invest a couple of grand i'd recommend that that's a hell of a way to do it because other people aren't putting the time and effort uh, and patience into learning and understanding getting a good grip on on that series and they're out there you can do it Good Lord. I look at pennies because I've been doing it for so long. It's a piece of cake, really. How long did it take me? No, it doesn't really matter how long it took me to learn the series. Because I'm still learning. I've been doing it forever. Now, why would it do that? Here we go. We'll just hit that button. Computer's going to do its thing here. Okay, uh, how long it takes me to learn a series is going to be different from how long it takes you to learn a series or somebody else to learn a series. We all learn at our own pace. No question about that. 1941D, 41 is usually pretty good on wood, but more on the, the fillies than anything else. But we want to give that a good look here. What? What? How the f I don't. I don't read anagram. I was born in the 60s. We don't know how to do that phone thing. I just got the phone that you don't flip open because the other one just died and I didn't sell them anymore. Canadian coin site. A really good one is uh, Coins in Canada. Let me give you that right now. Let's see. Copy that. I'm going to give it to you right here. you got to bear in mind the values listed there are in Canadian dollars. So you're going to multiply by you know, 0.75 to come up with American value. Uh, but it's a good site, and you can learn stuff. Now, once you learn a series, right, if you put in a couple of years of studying, say, wheats or buffalo nickels really, really hard, um, a lot of that information is going to carry over to other series. Now, once you understand how the things are made, well, they're all made pretty much the same. Thank you, Ken, for sponsoring a kid. SJ, there she is. SJ's got this thing where she, uh, uh, there's another one. I have to get the other one. She's got this thing going. 
And geez, if you want to promote the hobby, where is it? Come on. There, there it is. This is it. Get that filthy. That's my laundry to blow. And there you go. She's got this thing where you can uh, you can buy a sticker, right? And there's another one that's like got a heartbeat or something going across there. And uh, geez, they're five bucks. But if you really want to help her out and move this forward, because it's not, she doesn't make, she makes five bucks on a 50 cent sticker, but the money goes to coins for kids, right? Or you can take your sticker. Now you can put it on, say, you know, a PCGS box or something. Hey, kind of nice. You can put it on your car, but uh, people might not really understand it. But we do. Around here, we know what it is. It's, for, it's coins for kids, and if you have a kid, get a hold of her for the details. I like that one. I'm going to order more of those. Ooh, I found out I can get a whole bunch of stickers with this on it. Um... Uh, who knows? You get them car sized. Maybe some t shirts. If I'm going to do a t shirt, yeah, that might be a way to go. Something motivational. I like that one. Oh, Daryl and Quasi's here. With what? I'm not telling you right now. You should get your email on them dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, get a hold of SJ. Watch her last show. Because uh, you can sponsor a kid for 25 bucks. And if you want, she'll you know send you the address, and you can send the kid coins. I just send the money. That's good enough for me. I don't, I don't need to, I don't need to talk to the kid. I hate kids. They're sticky. They smell like cabbage. They're up. They, they, what's wrong with it? They never blow their noses. I had this one cousin, a little guy. What the hell was his name? Spencer. Uh, cute little fella, but he, the guy, he, he he couldn't blow his nose for like twelve years. Like, blow your nose, kid. Big. Uh, <laughs> get away from me. What's wrong with that kid? Good kid. He's like he's like 40 nowadays. He's learned to wipe his nose since. But uh, they're always sticky and stuff. My sister's got kids. Right? They come over. They mow. They haul stuff out of the garage. Put it back in. Lift up heavy stuff. And when they're done, they go home. Bye-bye. See you later. Uh, they can blow their noses, which is good. They don't smell so cabbagey. Gee, so one kid is like eight feet tall by now. Good Lord. They, how do they grow so fast? She calls up. She says, you coming to his graduation? And I'm thinking, so he's in high school already. He's, he's like five years old. He's in high school. No, no, he's 20. Huh? How does that happen? Man, they grow up so darn fast. You know, you get them started with the coins, and they've got the time. These kids, they got the time. They got school, sure, right? Play time. That's all well and good. They got that uh, 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 Boy Scouts and maybe stuff, but they got, you know, all that time. Geez, don't you wish you were 10 years old again, 12 years old again, and could put in a couple of years of, of good study into something like this? Because really, that would, that's all it would take. Uh, spare time effort for a couple of years, and you can... Get your head around a series. You know exactly what to look for. Now you have your head wrapped around what uh, what the value is on these things in various grades. You get a feel for the market. And then you can start to really take advantage of it. I did with stamps after school. There you go. My brother did the stamps. And then he left the stamps and got into the girls. Well, there was no going back from there. Yep. I did the astronomy thing. You know, got the telescope. I was a geek in high school. They beat me up a lot. I have a second channel. I'll look and see if you get one by Andrew Parton. That's me. Okay, Ginger. Okay, 41. Let's look for uh, wood. Yeah, that looks pretty standard. But it takes a lot of patience. Well, you know, kids are always learning and growing. So they've got the patience. Jeez, it's, you know, every day is something new. Remember when you were five and every single day was new? Wherever you went, it was all, you'd never seen it before. And the world just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger as you get further and further out. You know, then you get to school and that's a new thing. Then you, you find out there's another town across the river. And you find out there's a river and there's a town on the other side of that. And the world just keeps on getting bigger. And you can take all that time and put it into 
one thing. Of course, I got you putting into 50 things so you can learn what you're going to do with yourself to, for the next 75 years. Yeah. I told my mother I was an accountant. I'm a CPA, Ma. I couldn't tell her the truth. It'd break her heart. Yeah, I'm in construction, Ma. I'm a leather neck. I put on boots and yell at guys. That'd break her heart. No, no. I'll uh, CPA, Ma. I can't come down. It's, you know, tax season, Ma. I gotta go. All righty. What do we got here? We do get some estimates in here. 1950 SES looks perfectly normal. That's a ball to riff on that one. Anything up here? Just some crud and grunge. All right. Well, we'll keep on looking. Oh, look at San Francisco. I'm confused. And that's perfectly normal, too. I'm just rambling about how long and patience. Uh, all too often, the people get, I see people getting involved in the hobby because they think they have a coin that's, that's worth, I mean, big money. Dude, this is for sale. It's a million dollars or some ludicrous amount. They think they've scored just this massive windfall. Well, they don't really know, and that's understandable because it takes time to learn. But uh, they don't get into the hobby because they're not willing to invest that time to learn. They say, I have a coin. It's a 1950. It's a, I got a 1942 penny. What's it worth? They want a fast answer right now. Get their money so they can do their thing, whatever it is. And it's got nothing to do with coins. Well, whatever you're doing, whatever your thing is, it's going to take time. You want to get good at it? It's going to take time. Really, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Find your little niche and just be the best you can be at whatever your thing is. Can you put the 1910S under the scope? I cannot. That was sold off a couple years ago for, I think, 30 bucks. Uh, the picture you see in the static image of this video is a 1910S uh, RPM number 2. It's got an S over an S. But I can show you the picture. <coughs> Let's see, where would I put that? Do 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 pics. Is it in pics? Might be. No, wait. I know where it is. It's in camera roll. I gotcha. And attributed varieties. Oh, let's see. 1910S. That's it. Let me open that up. Yep. Now you know what to look for on 1910S. You can see these. Let's see. Let me find my way around here. I'm going to open this. Go to the screen. I can probably make that bigger. Uh, let's see. View. Zoom in. Yeah, you can find these uh, hunting eBay. Seriously, if you look at this, you get an S on top of an S. Um, so it's kind of shifted to the north. And gosh, you can get these for, you know, three bucks, five bucks, eight bucks, and probably turn around and flip them for 20 to 30 more than you paid. And you can pick these out, but you got to know what to look for. No fooling. Just that little bit of knowledge. That's a nice little advantage. And I see one of these every, I don't know, once or twice a year I see these. And, you know, bid the heck out of it. Uh, every now and then I get one. This coin, this piece right here, I think I paid about 10 bucks, and I sold that for 30 You know, it's an extra 20 bucks, And I spent the 30 on more coins. You know, keep it cycling, keep it going in the loop until the loop is so darn big that you don't need the damn job anymore. Make this your thing. Let's see, i got to find my way home. So there's that. That's the chat. And I come over here. i got to redo the... i got, I got to redo this every time. Let's see. Home. There. That's what I can see. Yeah, it's very visible. It jumps right out. There are others that jump out like that. The 1925 S's. Uh, there are several of those. You can, you can see them from across. Oh, look. There's one right there. And it's selling for 95 cents. Doink. Pick that up. Uh, you'll, fee you'll find these if you know what to look for. So, geez, just put in some study. And it's not a whole lot of time. You've got Wexler. You've got Copper Coins. You've got, uh, what's that other one? Konica. And it'll tell you what these things are. It'll show it to you. 
Oh, it's a really good example. That's an RPM, a repunched mint mark. Mm -hmm. It's really visible. I have to give it to you later, he says. There you go. Oh, let's see. Here's a scope. Uh, and when you know what to look for, and on pennies, it's real simple, right? You look at the date. You look at the mint mark. If you see anything out of the ordinary, especially on the date and mint mark, that's probably the best place to look. Then you look at the eyeball, right? Perhaps the bow tie and the ear. You're looking for, you know, double lines. And like instead of that one little nostril, look two little nostrils, right? Check up here and trust. The easiest places to see are the R, the armpits, and the T, right? There's the T, and that's the the place on the T. I don't want to show you my armpit. It's, can you say armpit in public? Is that all right? It's one of those places that's not quite right. Kind of like cabbage smelling kids. They're not quite. You got to come and see the new baby. Does he look like the last one? Because that was one ugly baby. Okay, up here you look at E pluribus unum. You want to see these dots. Right up in here. You don't have to check the whole darn coin if you just know, you know how to scan it. Check the tops of the wheats. Check these down here. If you see crud, skip it, move on. This looks pretty normal here. See these are these are circular dots when they look like kidney beans. Stuff. No! The the baby ate the dingo. Don't forget to hit the like. How long does it take to, to learn a series? Well, you got to learn what it should look like. And they get design changes over the years. Yeah, Seinfeld. That's one ugly baby. Whew. That's right, the sea was angry, my friends. Was that the same episode where George had the shrinkage? you got to know what it's supposed to look like. A lot of people come up and say, Dude, I find these, my, I got dots between my E pluribus unum. Well, you should have dots between E pluribus unum. That's, that's, that's a different episode? What is that, 20 years ago? Okay. Well, you know, if you got a whole bunch of pennies, and you can get them, you know, by the box at the bank, you've got 50 examples of everything right in front of you. Just sort them out and look at, uh, you know, one date at a time. But how long is it going to take to learn? Well, dude, it's all about what you put in. <laughs> exactly. It's all about the time you put in, the attention you give it, and what advantage you have, right? Uh, I mean, this this ain't, uh, you know, going to study algebra or geometry. People get, you probably, if you're watching this, you know, after 28 minutes and you're still watching this, you're probably into it, right? It's probably already your thing. Let me move this. It's blinding me. That's that awful light. I really should figure something else out with that. You can't see nothing. So you already have advantage because when you're interested in something, uh, information assimilates. You, you you absorb it a whole lot easier. I mean, we could talk about uh, you know the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Well, you'd have to be really interested in the hypotenuse of a right triangle, wouldn't you? But here, geez, you're picking it up like it's oh, slurping it up like a sponge, like mashed potatoes with gravy. <laughs> it's a wonderful that is. Shrinkage is normal. There was shrinkage. It was cold. Ken, do you have any 1972 Lincoln cents to look through? I probably do. Um, I get my pennies at the you know around Christmas time because that's when people take all the good stuff back to the bank. They they will clean the house. Uh, and, you know, I pick up a dozen boxes, you know, 15 boxes, maybe, depends on what I got time for. That's what I pick them up. And after a couple of months of a few minutes here and there, I'll have gone through those and separated them into years, right? Just sorting them. Uh, so I got boxes of stuff over here, just, you know, split into years. Then I get more time here and there, you know, boiling some spaghetti. Uh, I'll split that year. You know, I got a section of the table. All I do is sort pennies. The towel is black that I got down there. So then I, you know, I separate the 70s into, you know, 71, 2, 3, 4. 
five, then then six and seven and eight and nine. Yeah, all of those. It's only ten. I got a sword at a time. Makes it real easy. That's wrecked. Thundering. That's a neat color on this one. What's going on here? No, I think it's just a crud climb. Okay, nothing on the date. Man, maybe a little die chip on the nine. Let's just, let's have a look. Maybe a little flatten on the nine. No, that's a die chip. I don't get too many die chips on 1944 inside the nine. Well, let's look at more. If you see something, keep on going. Nothing there. That looks pretty good. See the armpits? Check all your armpits. All right, I'm going to stick that. And I got this cup here. It's I haven't gone through them much more than just pick them out. I'll get to them later. If that's really important, then I'll stop what I'm doing and give it. Oh, this side. I'll give it more attention. Okay, we zoomed in. Now we're going to zoom back out. 1945. That was a very good year. Okay. Anything on that eyeball? I guess something going on there. Okay, zoom back in. Alright, that needs a loop. There you go. That looks like a little bit of extra metal just inside and below that, that eyelid. And boy, that's going to be just about impossible to show. Yeah. But your eye is going to pick up a whole lot more than that scope. And that one goes in the picks bucket. Mm -hmm. But if you were to get into it, right, just start picking up boxes of pennies. You know, you already start off with a, a pretty simple understanding of, you know, get the uh, get the right dates out of there. Anything before 1958, anything Canadian, anything with a starfish or pig on it, right? Any foreign coins, pick those out and keep them because they're different. Right? You keep your shiniest one of each date, so you build a, a set, a reference set, right? Really, you could, pick, you could put together a pretty darn decent set of memorials. Uh, and almost have it complete and do it, you know, with five boxes of, of pennies. And it would cost you two dollars. Seriously. And then, you know, some flips and inserts or whatever. And you have, you know, a reference set. What's that line? How far does it go? It goes just that bottom half. Let's look at that line. And that's a 1941. 1941 is a great year for wood, but where there's wood, there's laminations. And that's a very fine lamination. It goes up to his, under his jaw. That's what that is. Okay, we'll keep that too. Not a huge amount of value in that one. But eventually I'll put together a batch of you know, minor lambs and see what I can get. I bet you I get a whole lot more than five cents a piece for them. Can someone give me $25? You know, you don't need $25. You just need patience. You need $1 and turn it over, 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 and over. That's a darn thing. Finding a few bucks isn't so hard. I mean, you can walk down the streets and collect cans and take them back. And you can find how much money you need. And it's a start. You know, it's opportunity. If you get a few dollars and you can't get to the bank, well, if you're on here, you're online. So you can go to eBay and just hunt their pennies. The price of a box of pennies. I got going way back in the day with, you know, a couple of bucks. I'd shovel Mrs. Fenno's driveway and get $4 in a cookie. They were good cookies. And she was a real sweetheart. And every couple of weeks I'd run down, take out her trash, and give me a quarter. Okay. 
you know, in the fall, like Red Good Leaves, took all friggin' day. May you get these big ass trees and maples, they drop tons and tons of leaves. Good lord. And she just had a little property, but the way it was, all the wind pointed at her house in every direction. So the leaves would just be, you know, two feet deep. Take you all freaking day to break those leaves. Okay, I'm done. She give me a cookie and four dollars. That's when you think about putting a pillow on her head. Four dollars? You old bitch. You crotchety. You crotchety old prickly bitch. Well, four dollars I didn't have before. But I take the money and go down to the back, right? I get a couple of, you know, some penny rolls. I go to the walk-up window because it was down. See, the it was on a slight hill, this one bank. So I go to the walk-up window, which was outside in the back. And I get, you know, four bucks and pennies. And I sit there on the curb and pick through, pick out the wheat pennies and the old ones. Anything really, really shiny, you know. It cost me 20 cents and I put those in my pocket. And I take the pennies. I go to the front door, which is upstairs and on the front. And I'd say, can I get some nickels? Well, here you go. You know, I got a couple of rolls of nickels. And I pick through those. Right there on the curb. Middle of winter. People walking by. What's that kid doing? He must be special. Every now and then, you know, if I dress up like really shabby clothes, they give me a dollar. Thank you. And that works pretty good. Then I go across the street, right, with what I got, and I'm, you know, another 20, you know, 15 or 20 coins, and I could put all war nickels back then. And uh, go across the street, there's another bank, and I take my nickels and I say, can I get some pennies? Sure, here you go. Well, guess what now? Back to the curb. And for the same four bucks, I could turn it over. I mean, you know, eight times before the banks close. Then you stop at the stores on the way home. And that was, it was uphill two miles. This is not bullshit. It was two miles from downtown to get home. Uphill all the way through the snow. And that is a true story. I can get you a map of that. Got to start with nothing to finally have something. It takes time. It's patience, right? Uh, you see these people, you know, they get these pennies. Oh, what's this? I got a 1950, I got a 1952 penny. What's it worth? And they sell the darn thing for a hundred dollars and immediately get rid of that hundred dollars. Get rid of it. Jeez, what if you, you know, put that hundred dollars back in? Because I would buy, let's see, 10,000 pennies to go through. And dude, you're going to find something in those 10,000 pennies. Now, the first time you go through, you're going to pick out the better dates, you know, that you know about, the real shiners. You're going to pick out the Canadians, the foreigns. Uh, and then what? Well, then you take them back to the bank, you, you know, get your money. You got to you got to use two banks, one to pick them up, one to drop them off. You can't pick them up and drop them off at the same bank. You'll just get your same coins back. You done picked them out. Go to a different bank to pick up a different one to drop off. But you keep cycling it you know when you when you take the money out and spend it on some big stereo you just killed this project killed it you know you just need to put in a couple of bucks a week and i mean you're talking about what three four months and you got a box of pennies meantime you you know rotated a hundred times already you got a good set Coin collecting gets money, right? This is this is money. You're collecting money. It's going to cost money to keep these. Yeah, and we were just as good as barefoot back then. We didn't have much. Man, we didn't have arms and legs. We were, we were stumps. But we got by just fine. We took care of what we had, which was nothing. That's what we had back then, nothing. But it's, it's patience. Uh, you don't need a lot of money to get going. But your, your second box, well, you know how you study and read and watch and see and listen and you pick up on stuff. That second box, you're learning, oh, geez, I need to go through those 1999s, 1998s, and 2000s and look for that wide AM. 
So now you're picking out your, all your, you know, wheats anyway. You're getting those. That's a given. You're going to get a dozen of those per box on average. But now you're looking up for the whams. Okay, so you get a cup. Just like that. If you had to, you can go through the trash and get a water bottle and cut it, wash it, take it down to the river, rinse it in mud a few times, and it's clean. Seriously. And you write on it. Maybe not with this pen. You invest fourteen dollars into a sharpie, and you write zero zero on it. So now you know to collect your two thousands, and check them for wide AMs. You know, a little bit of cash helps. These are three dollars. You know, jeez, if you want to work on cars, you're going to spend a whole lot more than what you spent on coins. I got a nephew who does cars. He got into cars real, real good. He, uh, for some reason, he just loved mufflers. Well, that's okay. It was a good start. Later, he got into tinting windows, and he still tints windows. This is 20 years later. He's tinting windows still. He does it on weekends. You want your windows tinted? It's like 100 bucks. Takes him an hour. He do. He does 10 cars in a weekend. Kid makes three, four thousand bucks just tinting windows on weekends. Dude. That's more than I make. He's a good kid, though. He's got the he's got them other youngins that herd of youngins, and you know they, they smell like cabbage, but they're good kids. You know, I should go down and spend a weekend with them. That'd be fun. I always have fun when I do that. 1954. Okay, so now instead of just the wheats, right, and the Canadians, now you're picking out those whams, and every now and then you're gonna get one. And when you do, I mean, you're talking five bucks, right? Really nice one, 10 bucks, maybe more. Uncle Ken, that's me. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. Twelve nephews. Dude, they're coming out of the woodwork. But the good part is, each year they smell a little better. I got one niece, and she's three. Little thing. She's like this tall. Midget. Well, she's not a midget. She's three. Yeah. Okay, look at the eyeball on this one. Let's see. I want to touch that because I saw some crud up here. Here I got some crud. And if I get crud there, there's a good chance I got some crud over here. So I'm going to touch that crud with this toothpick. Real gentle like. See if it moves. Now I can't tell if it moved. Okay, let's get in there and have a look. Because it's a great spot for double dies. I'm not even checking the dates and what's known. I'm just checking what's known for varieties and seeing if this is a match. Let me see if this moves. Okay, that moved. It's all gone. There is nothing here. That's soft crud. Never mind. Return to your homes. Nothing to see here, people. All right. Great. Now you're making, you know, you're pulling those whams out. And really, you're making twice as much money on the whams if you can sell those off than you will on all those wheats. The wheat pennies that you see people picking out, that should be just the perks, the bonuses. The big money is in the varieties that people don't look for. Seriously, they don't look for them. You see a lot of it in these groups on Facebook. You see a lot of it on some of these uh, video channels. But, uh, they're few and far between. These are very few. You got, you got millions of people out there that collect coins. You got tens of thousands that'll go through rolls. Most of them are looking for silver. All right, they'll find the silver. That's kind of neat. I mean, you can just go hunt for silver, and now you got ten times your money. You know, or six times your money on the, on the uh, the forty percenters. Yeah, they do that too. You just need to go go through a whole lot of coins. Baseball team. I had no idea what that means. Ooh, just got a 64D over D from the local Wendy's, says RB. Outstanding. Yep. You don't even have to have the coins. Because I can guarantee you, your brother, your cousin, your mother, your father, somebody you know has a jar of coins. Hey, Ma. 
Can I go through your panties? Look at them. I'll roll them up for you. And she says, no. You put a pillow on her head. That's what I did. Worked great. I got the panties. Do what you got to do. I want to look at the 1959D. Maury Veal sent some of these beautiful shiners. Right? And they're just screaming hot. And there's one repunch mint mark on 1959. And all you see is a line on one edge of one corner of that D. And you got to play with the light and get in there. And just, that's it. Just one little, just, it's this big. That's it. Well, you got to look for them. And you get some die cracks and stuff you can hunt for. It looks like it might be one right there. I'm going to look at this under the under the loop. All right. That's not one of them. But what I want to know is, why is there a memorial set in this sack of weeds? Huh? Well, it happens. Is it better than my existing 1959D? Not, no, not really. But we'll look at it anyway. All right, that'll go back to the bank over here. Okay, so you keep on going, you keep on going, right? You get another box of pennies, and this time, as well as the 2000s, now you're going to look at uh, 1984, because there's a really valuable uh, double ear on 1984. And then you keep the... Oh, 94 is because there's a really valuable rever uh, double ear on that one. Then you got to keep your 83s and look at those because you want to look at the, you know, one cent on the back. Can he do it? Is a motivational, a coin motivational speaker. Love to listen to this channel. Well, you know, before you know it, you've got all your wheats. You're checking for all the cams and whams for all the dates. You know the best valuable dye varieties for all the years of memorials right you know what you're looking for on these years so really any year you could check if you know where to check right you check the date you check the ear you check the eye you take a look at in god we trust and you check liberty and that's probably going to be all of your most valuable varieties right you come across the back, you're checking the dots, you look at the bottom of the L, the U, the top of the ears, and the bottoms of the stems. And that's going to be most of your valuable varieties. Hmm. And you'll all learn this in about 48 minutes. So now you just need to put that into practice. And for that, you're on your own. You don't need money. You go get your money. Use somebody else's money. They got it. You got a crazy uncle? I know you do. Everybody's got a crazy uncle who's got, you know, like a big pile of change in a can or a, a funny looking piggyback a piggyback check like a, a basset hound right, or they just have a like a 55 gallon drum in the middle of their living room and that's all they do with it is throw their change in and then they go to sleep and go to work and do it again the next day and do you, you have I have an uncle like that I'm the uncle like that matter of fact I took after him well geez Hey, man, can I look through your change? Be prepared to buy anything you find. That looks fairly normal. Right, you go through a lot of them and not find much. How many coins have we gone through so far in this hour? And how many? We found a couple of things. A couple of small laminations. What do we got here? Maybe we got, well, we can't see it. Home there. Maybe we've gone through a roll or two, and that's about it. Huh? Well, I do a lot of talking. Okay, that one's on the floor forever. There, good. That'll cover me for the best part of next week's show. Huh. But then you can extend what you learned with the pennies over to nickels, right? So you have an idea of what you're looking for on nickels already because you've done the same thing with pennies. You want to be able to check the date, right? Maybe it's a Buffalo you're looking at. Maybe it's a Jefferson's, right? You want to check the date. Look for that F. Right? You want to check his face, especially around the, you know, around the face. Now, remember the ear? That's right in the center of the coin. 
So you want to check the center of that coin because, well, that's because those are class 8 double dies. Right? Check those mint marks. What the hell is this? That's a 23. Yes. Well, that's good. Okay. Check the center of your coin, which is right about here. Over here, you check the horn. All right, kind of wore out. Check those letters in the United States. You're looking for doubling. E pluribus unum. And now, geez, um, it didn't take long to learn the, the buffaloes if you know what to look for or how to look at your coins. And you learn on these, you extend it to those, and the next series is just as quick. Really, that first series of study, and I don't care what it is, if it's Wheats, if it's Jefferson's, if it's uh, Memorial Sense, uh, you're getting the experience of learning what to look for, learning how to look, learning how to learn. Okay, what do we got here? We got a die chip on the nine, we got a die chip on top of the one, inside the five. Better look at his face here. That I bet uh, that looks good here. Looks good over here. The face. Trust looks sharp. Let's look at buy. Nothing there. But I got a couple of die chips. I'm going to keep that one. Look at the back. Oh, that's just filthy. Is it worth keeping? Is that tower crowd? I don't think that's really worth keeping. That's just grungy as hell. We'll give that away. Somebody will pick it out. Whoa! That one's black. This looks like it was at a fire, then hit with a fireman's axe. To ten plot twists in movies. Ooh, gouged up. That's crap. So how long does it take to learn? Well, the first thing you learn takes the longest. After that, you kind of start picking it up a little faster and faster until you get to a point that you, you don't just learn the series. You learn how... To identify these things. There's SJ. Food for thought. Penny sour smell. If it smells like that one. Ooh, wait. Haha. -ha. That's a big fat die break right there. That's raised metal. You can see that. While you're smelling these coins, just you know, give it a glance. And you can see some of these. That big die chip you can see from you know from across the room here. That bright spot on the left weed ear, that's a die chip. Big and but they don't have a lot of value because they're not recorded. Okay, that's part of the reason I stick them in the cup over here. It's a nineteen fifty three. Nothing up we could look at that. C D B I E B and E and in here we got some crud. Is it crud? Yes, that's crud. Okay, keep moving. But we'll keep that one for the dime chip. Mm, do you lick the coin? Every chance I get, uh, as soon as I come in, I probably sit here for 20, 30 minutes. Just... Oh, wait, that's XF. Just go through every one of them. It doesn't take that long. Really, if you want to get in touch with your coins, and really be one with the coin, you need to, you need to lick it. That's a $16,000 lick, baby. That's right. Is there anything different on there? No. Look how clean it is after I licked it. Should have seen it before. Good Lord. I mean, it was just... God. It was awful. 51D. Now, see how that D is kind of frigged up? I want to look at that. I'm going to get right in there and look. Is it flattened? Maybe. Is it doubled? Possibly. Is it just a die chip? Also probable. But I'm looking for little horns off his head. Right? Think of the top of the D and the bottom of the D kind of starting out and they don't complete. It's just how oh, I see these hooks. Boy, it's going to be tough. And sometimes they're going to be subtle. And you're right at the limit of the camera. Now that bottom serif kind of has my attention. And over there on the right, about 4 o'clock, right over here, where's my stick? Come on. I got a little, just a little 
stink sticking out. Oh, that's the wrong term. A little, what do you call that? A blip. All right. And up on the top left, I got kind of a slash. I want to hold on to that one, give it more look. Because I can look and see with that and get a whole lot more information than I can from this. It's a good camera, does the job, but this is this is better. You need to lick it. Lick that coin. Coin lickers are us. Get a Devo hat. Lick it good. Need the shape. It's not too late to lick it. Do 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 do. Yeah, I grew up in the 80s. You guys missed so much when you didn't, if you didn't grow up in the 80s, dude, you missed all the cool shit. We had Kevin Bacon, Ron Reagan, we had cordless phones. Cordless phones came out, I had one. It was like, it was the size of like a cannon. Weighed like 14 pounds, you couldn't lose the cordless phone. Because you set it in the middle of the room and you trip over it. Is that a chair? No, that's my phone. And uh, it would probably reach, you know, a good 100 feet. You could go outside with the phone. No more limitations to this 5-foot cord. Yeah, the 80s rocked. We could do anything with our hair. As long as, as, long as it was awful, people loved it. Is that a mullet? Yeah, man. You get this thing going on. And the chicks that have it feathered. Like, whatever, man. They look good. And then you had those girls in the sweatsuits. You had these TV shows that's just aerobics. You could stare at that for hours. That interfered with my coins for a while. But, you know, I'm okay. I'm talking again. And you had, what you have back in the 80s? You had Little House in the Prairie was still on TV. Anybody know what it was? The Waltons was still on. Cheers. MASH was still on. Hill Street Blues. You got none of that nowadays. None of it. Tight pants. Yeah, we miss those. That was a good part. Parachute pants. Boom boxes. I had the big Sony. You know, with the two. It was this big. I mean, it was this thick. That tall, right? two big speakers the size of a car. You know, you could duct tape that to your car, and it was the coolest thing. 44D. And back in the 80s, this coin was only 40 years old. So what's what would a 40-year-old coin be right now in 2018? Uh, minus 40. Let's see. 1988. A 1988 coin today is the same as a 1944 coin in 1984. How about that one? You ever think about that, huh? No, you only care about yourself. But uh, yeah, these are still in circulation all the time. MTV, I want my MTV. The Dire Straits, Flock of Seagulls, all that stuff. All the cool people listen to Flock of Seagulls. And see what I'm talking about for Woody's on 1944? Let's see. Home. And you can pick up that color real easy. Over the right side. So you've got low contrast, light coverage, uh, almost vertical direction, and uh, medium coarseness. That's a Woody. And I keep all them Woody's. I had the huge boom box. It cost like $20. Yeah, dude. The batteries weighed 25 pounds from that thing. Takes eight DD. I mean, you know, just put car, just throw the car batteries into the thing, and try to pick it up. You know, hey man, what are you doing this weekend? I need some help loading batteries. Bring a friend. There you go. That that wood goes across that thing. You go to a store, get a few shopping carts. Just you know, they they bring over a forklift and you just you know, bucket brigade the batteries and the. In a truck to get them home. Yep. But that's, that's how we did things back then. Smoke a cigarette anywhere with no receipt. You go into the store with a cigarette in your mouth. I remember my grandmother, right? In the produce section, a cigarette, you know, you got an ash on there this long. The, cigar the cigarette's this long. 
The ash is this long, and she's over here poking the plums. No problem. No problem. That was perfectly normal. People in the beer and wine section, dude, it's a freaking Friday night special. It's, it's happy hour. They go in, light a cigar, crack a beer right there in the aisle. Oh, oh, oh. They're drinking it before they got to the cashier. Stop in the cheese department. Get a chunk of that going. Hey, Nomadic. Yep, the 80s were special. That was a special time. Uh, it's where fashion was not yet policed. It's because of the 80s we have the fashion police. We had the best music. We had Prince. We had Michael Jackson, if you like Michael Jackson. Some people like Michael Jackson. Uh, he had a couple tunes I could tolerate. Just eat it. Do 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 do. Yeah, we had that. It was like 1983. What do you got here? That tea looks weird. 1945 and the nine looks kind of fat, but it also looks damaged. But the five looks perfectly normal. So let me go with the idea that nine is damaged. Always go with the assumption of damage first. We're gonna look at this one. I've damn myself to hell. We're home. Okay, always go with the assumption of damage. Then prove your case if you think it's a double die. That nine is squished right up the side. Over here in the eyeball, that's a bright spot. Up here in the T, squished flat. Over here in the, the BIE, dude, that's a goner. No, there's nothing there. What happened? Ray Bans, Varnays. That's right, we had it all back then. That's back when Warren A's, people didn't even know it about them. Dude, I'm cool and nobody knows it. It's the way it was. Cleveland's career water revival with more 70s. They were in the 80s. We had the Moody Blues back in the 80s. They were real big back then. Right, you had Led Zeppelin was still playing. What was saying weren't. We, we really didn't care because we were, we were doing some other stuff for sure. Man, oh man. 50S looks perfectly normal. At the 1982 World's Fair, they passed out packs of cigarettes when you entered. Oh, God love them. Hey, it's cigarette day at the hockey game. You know, you walk in, they give you a pack of smokes. It's always, it was always much more popular than, than Dozen Eggs Day. It's Dozen Eggs Day. And it looks like damage on the end. Yep. Blacked out in the 70s. Woke up in the 80s. It was the blackout of 1977 that brought about rap music. No fooling. All the looters. All right. They hit the music stores. They hit the electronic shops. And they got all those. And they got stuff. And, dude, they made music with it. And people liked it. Remember all that? They got recording equipment. A lot of people, a huge amount of wealth was developed from that. These these guys became quite popular. Well, God love them for it. We should have like a, a blackout at least once a, once a decade. Really good one. What do you think? Miami next? Yep. We'll get the Cuban music back. The maracas. Cheap Trick, Billy Squire, Run DMC. We had it all. That's a little mark. Nothing on that one. You see that documentary in the blackout? Uh, probably. Ooh, what do we got here? What do you got here? See the striations here? There's two possibilities for the striations. You're going to see these a lot. One, it's a woody. That's the first thing that comes to mind. But this... You can tell, this is where experience comes in. This looks like it is corrosion. See how it's pitted in, in spots? Let's put it over here under the uh, under the dumb cam. We're going to name this one, too, because the little one, that's the Lincoln cam. Okay, here's my coin that I'm looking at. The color is pretty standard, pretty regular. 
Nothing remarkable at the coin. A little bit of grime up there at 10 o'clock. Looks normal. Okay, under this camera, and I'm going to tilt this thing so we get a better look. I got these striations, but I got a lot of pitting on there. Well, is it is it a woody and laminations? Okay, you're going to find these a lot. You got copper and tin in here, and they don't always blend exactly right. Sometimes you got more of one, less of another. And you get these woodies. Okay, well, it's an improper alloy mix. It's the copper, the tin, the zinc, right? Uh, and if they're not uh, blended right, they separate. So that's that's the first thing I suspect. But here, uh, this is more consistent with exposure to a corrosive something, a corrosive solvent. And the most corrosive object out there is water. Right? And it can leave pits. It's uneven at times. It can be linear because of the way the coin is rolled. And this whole thing is... This is screaming pitting, which is not a lamination. This says this is a fountain coin. Let's look at the back and see if we got the same sort of thing going on here. Come on, straighten out. There we go. There you go. I've got pitting across just about every surface here. All right. And that's different from woody. Of course, you can always have, see the woodiness would be a, a planchet issue. Uh, the pitting from the, uh, the water, that'd be an environmental issue. So you could have pitting uh, and striations uh, from corrosion on a woody. Does that make sense? But this one looks to be environmental damage more than anything else. Remember, I always assume first that it's that it's damage. And you'd be hard pressed to go wrong. And it, when in doubt, keep the penny. There we go. We'll let somebody win that. What makes the vertical lines? The uh, the planchet is rolled, right? It comes in a, a bar, and this thing is rolled back and forth. So any irregularities in that coin, and it's, it's going to be linear, right? Now, let's find that again. Ah, there it is. Yep. Okay, but all the structure, all the crystalline metal structure of the coin is going to be linear. Right, so even if the copper holds up, but the tin doesn't, or the other way around, depending on what's in the solution, like say uh, a fountain or the ocean or you know some place where you throw pennies in, right? Uh, that difference in the metal content can leave if you you take out one of the metals, right? Let's say you got a charge going into the water, uh, you got some fountain lights. And uh, one of the lights is faulty, and it, it's charging the outer shell of that uh, uh, the light fixture. All right, that can attract ions out of the metal, so you're left with a, ha a higher uh, tin content, for example, or uh, more. It, it, it sucks out the zinc or, the, or something, and this is what's going to be left behind. Yeah, but it's not woody because the texture isn't right for woody. So go with the idea that it's damaged first. And you know, if you don't if you're not sure, keep it until you decide. The worst things they had in the seventies was pay toilets. Good lord. Vanilla ice ice baby. We did that earlier. Well not today. Sam Kinnison. Well, that's like uh eighties, nine yeah. It's Sam Kinnison. Didn't he get killed on his way to Vegas or something or Tahoe? How you doing, Cameron? The worst thing they had in the 70s was me. 70s, the worst thing, corduroy or flare legs or Shambhala. Perry Como. Perry Como's Christmas special. Every damn year. Where did they take emergency off on Saturday night to play Perry Como? Come on. He's left over from like the 50s. Thank you, Ken. Just pulled red boxes out of the mailbox. Oh, good. I hope to get some soon here. I send stuff out. It gets there in three days. I order it. It takes two weeks. And it's coming from across the state. Come on. Where's my stuff? 
It's so unfair. Lincoln already got his Sunday package. It is Wednesday. He got it this morning. I mean, like, 9 o'clock this morning, he had it. He's already bugging me. Get any more of those bus halves? Huh? I think he likes them. Well, I can't really blame them. They are pretty slick. If you don't have a bus half dollar, you want to get a few of those. You know? Dude, they're as cool as could be. In a Corvette, he was drunk. Yes, in a Corvette, he was drunk. What are we talking about? Because I want to get... This is the kind of story I'd be into here. Mike Badger's here. Hi, Kevin, everybody. I have bell bottoms on right now. Dude, all I wear is sandals. I never went for the bell bottoms. God, bell bottoms and halter tops. Okay, parts of the 70s were okay. Of course, you know, I was 10 years old. I really couldn't take advantage of that. Yeah, we had hippies. There were hippies everywhere. Stay away from those hippies. What's wrong with them? Because I was always curious, what's wrong with these hippies? Because I'm thinking, they're pretty groovy. They smell funny. They always had that, that funny smell to them. What was that? Nobody knows. What's that air freshener they put in their hippie, hippie mobiles? What's that funny smell? You stay away from those hippies. Okay. 1955. All right. But it takes time to learn a series. But once you learn that series, man, you're not going to forget it. It'll come. If you do get away from coins for, you know, 10 years, it'll come back. It's a whole lot easier to relearn than it is to learn in the first place. But you figure out what to look for, what dates to keep, and you just keep expanding your your little stockpile of notes. This is why we take the notes, so you know what to keep, what to look for. Right? You keep those 84s, you keep the 97s, you keep the 94s that you know they got a nice uh, reverse double die in the columns and the 94s. Right? You look at those 72s. A little extra color on this one. I'm not thinking it's much. Black Steel Reserve is here. And no oh wait, you changed it. It's Black Steel and Silver Numus Man. We just we'll just call him Black Steel because we know who the hell he is. Look at some 1972 Lincoln cents under the scope. You have to get some 1972 Lincoln cents. All right, we looked at that one. There, we got a few more of these done, and these are weeds. Let me show you. Hey, let's take a little break for just a few minutes so I can go in the reading room and, and look for spiders. Yeah, then I'll come back because I gotta see if I got 72s. It's usually the one of the first dates I go through. Oh. Uh, oh, that's my armrest. There we go. Okay, what do we got? 
go to the dollar store and get these shoe boxes. They're a dollar. Wait a minute. Um, there, we'll put the wheats up for now. There's a couple of shoe boxes. You know, they're this wide. Uh, about the size of a shoe box. I got one here for 80s, and this one's a 70s. All right, let's see what the hell we got in there. Thank you very much for the package you sent. Oh, it's no problem at all, TCVR. TCVR, she's like 12 years old and brand new. Send her something she ain't got. Good luck. She'll give her the address. Okay, here we go. These are broken into dates. 1981. 1984. Maybe we should look at that one. He's asking about 1972. Oop. You know, TCVR, a lot of people get into these uh, uh, penny rolls or nickel or dime rolls uh, and hunt them. And they look for stuff. But it takes a while to learn what else is in there. 1970, 78, 75, 71, 70s, not yet sorted out. That's just 70s. Mm -hmm. But while you're looking at stuff that you can get a hold of easily, 73, 74, how many are there here? Another 73, 76. I think I've gone through the 76s for the most part. Uh, you miss out a lot of times if you get stuck in the pennies or stuck in the rolls. You miss out on some of those, that old stuff, right? If you don't get too many Mercury dimes or Barber dimes in those rolls. Here's a 70, oh, geez, I've done the 72s recently. We can look at those. What else in here? 79s. 75s, 70s. Hmm, 79 is not a popular year. What's this one? 73s, 74. 70s are a quiet time. I don't have a lot of 70s to look for. Okay, we'll do the 72s we got and then play with the uh, 84s, which are a little more copious. Okay. So this is, you know, this gets over there stacked up. Let me just throw these on the floor. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Weighs about as much as the batteries for an 1880s Sony. All right. I'm growing at Ken PB and building knowledge. Needed a na new name. That's all right. Hey, Cindy. Silver Numus Man. Yeah. That's a one delightful thing about uh, the internet. You can be whoever the hell you want to. Brian's here. Brian's here. Oh, Brian, what time is it? We're going to go off air at 5 o'clock. Because, Brian, are you doing your 5 o'clock show as normal? Well, I got to go now. Hope to see you guys on my new channel today at 5. So, yes. Will be a good day for someone. Sure will. He's been doing a 5 o'clock show every, every weekday for forever. And he's like a piece of furniture. Okay, scope. 72D. And you can see the same die varieties on the 72Ds as a lot of times as you see on the 72Ps. If you know what to look for on the Ps, you have a good idea what to look for on the Ds and the Ss. There we go. And there ain't nothing here. Ain't nothing here, Lieutenant, but we'll keep looking. Over here, we're going to look at the leg of the R. Which is pretty normal. Look at the look at the little man. Check the points on the S. There we go. Right here. Look at the little tips of those S's. Look at those little points. Big. Where they come together at a right angle, hard to see. But where they come together at an oblique angle, right? Really acute angle. That's where you can start to pick stuff up. Again, look at the dots. Right? You get four of them, three of them, three or four of them. Look at those. There's less Willy. Wiley. Less Wiley. Okay. We're gonna find we're gonna find an example of a uh, die no uh, master die doubling eventually here. 72. I want to look at that too. Especially that tail. Above and below that tail. That's a big spot I want to look for. 
and the rest of this is nothing. You learn, you can identify stuff just on that two. If I can find the darn two. Okay, that two looks pretty normal. Which is a darn shame. We'll keep looking. It's a little squished over here. It's got some damage. We'll keep going. Because I know it's in here. I know we will find what I went, what I wish to find. So what I'm saying to TCVR, uh, yeah, you can find good stuff in those boxes. But a lot of times you don't find the old stuff. Oh, those barbers, they are few and far between in circulation. You can get them out of circulation. They're going to be pretty worn out like that one you got. Uh, that was pretty worn out. But what the heck, there was here. But there's more, so much more in those boxes than wheat pennies. So much more than just, you know, an occasional piece of silver. We talk about that sort of thing all the time around here. Wait, a 100 watt Fisher with two big speakers. I recall Fisher was the big name back then. Oh, that looks right up. That looks straight up. I think I've seen that one already. Yeah, I get it. But it takes time to learn what the heck do you look for. Okay. We're going to see it on there. That's a shame. That was a good candidate. I'm looking for a master die doubling. About half of your 72 is going to have master die doubling. Perfect. The first thing you're going to see is the inside the top of the two. It's going to have a ledge. I'm going to have to sharpen this up real quick. All right, the top of the two, the loop, inside it, inside you have that ledge. Okay, from there, let's get over here and take a look at In God We Trust. And the, in the, the E, in the top part of the E, you're going to have a ledge on the inside. You're going to have another one on the outside. And you're going to start to see doubling on other letters, such as the D. As you can see right up here. And here's where it really shows up. When it looks like an I on one leg of the end. No, really on both legs. Right here, right here. You see how you have like an I on the end? This is master die doubling. Now, I haven't looked at this yet, but if I go down and look at the B and the E in Liberty, I'm also going to see some doubling on there. And it'll look like it's shifted to the north. Which we can barely see here. But this is master die doubling, and you get these in about half of your 72s. That's P, D, and S. Roger that. I need to get myself a scope soon. They're 15, 20 bucks. Get get one of these, really. This is this is the king of tools. They're three bucks. Get ten of them. Have one in every room. No matter where you go, you got one. Okay. But in your 72. You're going to have that. When you got that little loop right up there at the top, it's going to be master die doubling. That doesn't mean it cannot be a double die. There are some doubled dies that have a master doubled die. A master double die. It could be both. Which is, you know, now you're starting to get into, you know, advanced level stuff. But they're out there. This one is not. This is a straight up master die doubling. You see it on the U, top of the U. You see it on the leg of the R over here yep go through your 72s you'll find you'll find 20 of these guaranteed and if if you have any questions any doubts just set them off to the side until you know oh look another one check out the top of the two where'd that first one go let's put these side by side Remember the E? Let's look at we. I get a ledge on the inside, which I could just barely make out here. As well as on the outside of the top of part of the, the we. Let's sharpen that up. Okay, D. Yep, look, we got that same split in the D. Right up at the top left. All right, how about the N? That looked like a, an I typed over that first N. There it is. 
That is a master die doubling. Let's get that other example we had. There's the M. See the left side of the M? Got a raised rectangle on it. See the D? Top left has a little split. This one, same damn thing. Remember, if you have a lot of something, if you have a lot of, of the same thing, figure maybe it's not common. Or maybe it is common, rather. Maybe it's not special, because if you have a lot of them, that's usually the first indication that it's not rare. Let's look at this one. Is that a ledge on the inside of the... God, it is! Another one! Three in a row! Let's look up here at the end. Tough to see. A little beat up, but it's there. Up at the top of that D. Yep, you see a little notch on the top of that D? Again. Now we got three in a row. God, how do you find 1972 double dies when they're all master die doubling? This one looks pretty freaking normal. Let's look at the two. Where is it? That's pretty, well, that kind of looks like it. Let's look at Liberty. If I could get this a little sharper, I'd be so happy. We've got 15 minutes till Let's Meet Brian is on. Oop, lost it. Okay, T R. These looks this looks pretty pretty normal here. The D's not split. Okay. Yeah, they're tough. But every now and then you got one that doesn't fit the master die doubling, and you say, hmm, what's going on here? Here's a 1972D. Look inside the two. It's got a little a little little extra there. And it's just too darn worn out to make anything here. No, that's kind of that's kind of tore up. You out of here, Bill? Well, thanks for coming in. You got a full roll BU Master Die Doubling. Yeah, I can see that. About half of them have Master Die Doubling, and that's P, D, and S. Okay, you just got to learn what to look for. And this one's going to confuse a lot of people. Remember, the working hub, no wait, the master hub makes the master die. The master die, the master hub can make many master dies. The master die makes the working hub, and it can make many of those. So with each progression, you're able to multiply how many repeats of design you get. Okay, the mass, the working hub makes the working die, and it can make, you know, thousands of them. And the working die makes the pennies, or the coins. There you go. See the top of the D, top left, how you got a separation line in there? Let's look over here at the N. Can you see that extra, it looks like the N has an extra leg on top of the leg, like it's stacked like bricks. Looks like an I on top of the N. Let's go look at that too. And I bet you we'll get a little shelf inside the loop. You can't see a thing on this one. Okay, well that's master die doubling. Because the master die can be hubbed and then hubbed again with a shift so you have doubling in there. And you'll have those. There are several examples out there. 1972. Can't see nothing. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one, though, learning. Yeah, Jesus, so much stuff to learn, huh? Where do you start? 1972S. Is that fungus? That's just nasty. I'm going to have to clean all these things. Yeah, I'm going to do a bunch of videos on how to clean coins and show you the results of each method. Yep, I got a whole bottle of ketchup. I called up the museum. You ever see that? How do I clean my coins? And they said, use ketchup. Ketchup? What's wrong with you? I called the museum. I said, what, what brand of ketchup do you recommend for cleaning your priceless artifacts? They laughed at me. So, the so I called the county and had them defunded. I don't think we should support them with our tax dollars anymore. Okay, 1972D, right? D. See that too? The die, um, the mint mark is added to the die. So the die is already made. 
right? The master die is already made, doubled, made the hub, made the working die. So you got a doubled master die on a 1972D because that D was added at the end. Let's look up here. Do we see it on the end? I can't see nothing. Up at the D. Maybe. Well, okay. On a better example that wasn't covered with crud, like this one. Yeah, I'm gonna have to clean that with like spinach or something. Alright. That's all the 72s. We found nothing in there. Oh. But if I take these, let's see. Home. These are the 72s we just looked at. And if I just spread them out, it's easy enough to pick out, hey, this is my finest example right here. Right? So if I don't have a collection of these, I just started with the finest out of 20. All right. Not great, but it's a whole lot better than nothing. And this is what I've got. Let's see. Can we see that? It's kind of shiny. You know, it's probably XF to AU. Got some brilliance to it. I'll take it, but I've already got that. Uh, but now I've got a reference on that. I can get a reference on the master die doubling. Set that aside because you're going to encounter the lot. You're going to get a lot of that if you're hunting 72. What was this bag? That's a 70s. We haven't. I haven't split those up. But I got the 84s. What do we got to look for here? Because we got 10 minutes before Brian comes on. Lincoln here. Lincoln got his package. He is stoked. He's going to show you what he got. Okay, let's see. Scope. I got 1984s, and we got to look hard at these. Because you got stuff all over these 1984s, man. You got to check the date. Got to. You're looking for that 8 to be fat, especially the bottom. Kind of like drooping over on the right side of that 8 on this side. That's what I want to see. This is why I want to see it fat. Kind of like a pregnant eight. I'm going to look up here. I especially want to look under. Is this the one I sharpened? Here, I'll make it smaller. There we go. I want to look for an extra ear under that ear. And dude, it's going to jump right out at you. You can't see it here, but it's going to be, it's going to be big. It's going to look like, you know, Part of the ear. Let me shade part of that. You're looking for that much extra ear, or maybe, maybe about that much extra ear. All right? You see how that's a raised little ear lobe thing down below it, straight down below it, and it's unmistakable. When you see it, you'll know it. You'll shit bricks. Now come up here and look at we trust. Okay, looks pretty simple. Darn it. I got nothing. That looks good over here. Let's look at the back. This is my new channel, says Brian Wilkinson. Brian Wilkinson had a channel. And in their brilliance, YouTube killed it off. We're not really sure why. But they killed it off. He had, what, 1,500 subscribers, and they, they killed his channel. So what we're trying to do is, uh, you know, get him back. Every day, 5 o'clock. Stop in, watch, you know, leave a like, but most importantly, subscribe. Where's that big thing we got from him? I got a big, I had won a bunch of stuff off of Brian. I didn't even expect it. I expected one thing, and the stuff that was in that package. We got a piece of silver here somewhere on the desk. Let's see. Here's the desk, and we look around. We're going to see. What do we got here on the desk? We got some lemon heads. We got a whole bunch of pennies. This is what we've been looking for. This is just props. And there, oh, look, uh, look at this. This is a great thing. I like this. He cut, he sends it in velvet. I'm going to paint Elvis on that. But you got this giant knob. Seriously, you can make a doorknob with this. Let's see if we drop it. What happens? Can you hear that? Sounds like a meteor. Clunk. That's 1.1 ounces of silver. And that's hand poured, 0.999. That's the 1.1 is over here in the hand. That's the guy's uh, little thing he punches in. Isn't that shiny? Look how shiny that is. There's the camera that I hate so much. Yeah. But you can win stuff on here, show. Get in there. Go do it, guys. It's 533. 
<coughs> it's so awesome, Ken. Nice heart. You got the good stuff there, man. Look at that. Yeah, he was looking at, did, did you ever buy the house? What's going on? Where are you with the house? It was a pretty nice house, I thought. Lots and lots of rooms. You know, I wish you luck there. Look, that's almost as shiny as this, this dime. Oh. That cleaned dime. Okay. Let's see if we can see that then. That's a shiny dime. All right. Now we're just showing off. There's Paula. Paula's back. Well, it's about time. Yep. Uh, you can, you know, anytime you want, you can pay me back for that bail and don't worry about a thing. I won't mention it to anybody. Whoops. Hmm. Holy, you just dropped my heart. There it is. A meteor. That's right. Sales are picking up there, Black Steel. Outstanding. Great to see you. I got a It's Me Brian Barr in the big pick. In the big pack. Oh, he's got these. It's it's me, Brian. It's hand poured, but it's it's me. It is me, Brian. His old channel name. You know who he is. It's it's Brian. We know him as Brian Wilkinson. It's a two toy ounce, which is darn near double this size. And dude, this is huge. Uh, this is bigger than a silver eagle. Uh, two toy ounces, 0.99 silver, and it's it's in the big pack today. Cool. Get in there. What's stopping you? Okay, we got a couple of minutes left. So let me walk you through the 1984s because we got these over here. What do we got? It might be 84. It might be 89. Hard to, I can't really. What would you say that says? That's 1984. I don't know. Whatever the hell. Okay, check out everything. When you do the memorials, you look at the tips of the S. Tips of both S's, right? If they're not points, you got something. It, could, it might look flat. You want to look at your dots on EPU, right? You want to look at the tips of the A. You want to look at the leg on the R. And I'm looking at, you see the R. How much of that R am I looking at? That much. That's, that's the amount of R that I'm focusing my eye attention on. I'm not, not looking at the whole thing. I'm looking at that much of it. And that's the level of detail you need to be at to find a lot of these. On the A, how much of the A am I focusing on? I'm focusing on that much of the A. I want to see separations on that corner. That's all. Anything bigger than that, you're going to pick it up easy. But I want to look at that level of detail. Over here... Check your statue, especially in your 2000. Oh, look, right there. What's that? That's Bay 4. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4. Bay 4, you get this point. It's Lincoln's neck. Over here, sometimes you get another one, which would be the back of its, back of its head. And that's probably it. These are just clash marks. All right. I like to see good, full, complete steps. Well... The late 70s, early 80s. Dude, this is about the best you're going to get. All right, down here. I'm going to check out the N, the corners, the serifs of the N on the C. And how much of that am I looking at? Where's that N? There's the N. I'm looking at that much of that N. And I'm looking for splits. Over in the C, I'm looking at that much of the C and I want to see splits all right and also check FG a lot of coins are going to have funny things going on in the FG if they're big and fat I mean they just look chubby and overweight smelling like cabbage you want to give that coin a better look now if you do find something compared to uh, you know you've seen my videos uh, go over to Wexler or copper coins or um, oh Konica Right, variety of beast, and compare what you have with what they have listed. Now, just because what you have is not listed doesn't mean you have nothing. It may be you have something new. Well, that's neat. That's when you start contacting people. But do your homework first so you don't say, oh, that's just a clash. Because you're going to find all kinds of things on these. Like that little clash. Uh, into the 90s, you're going to start seeing extra 
columns. I mean, right down the middle of the vase. Sometimes you see them outside the vase. Kind of neat. Um, again, in the 90s, into the thousands, you're going to see extra bits around that statue. See you later, Mike. You stay groovy. Bye, everyone. It's time for Brian. It sure is. Let's call it good here. Oh, what is that? Oh, gross. I'm going to have to clean that with pickle juice or something. There you go. But keep your shiniest and best examples each time. Replace the old one. Keep the better one. And your set will continually improve. Look, it's been an hour and 40 minutes. It's me. Brian is on next. I'm going to put the link to the video directory up here. So just give me one second here. Coin video blog and live stream directory. I'm going to copy that link and post it here. Right here in the chat. Paste. There. And from there, you can get to It's Me, Brian. Or actually, Brian Wilkinson. Guys, I want to thank you. Lincoln been eating without his bib on again. It happens. We try to help him, but he fought us off too hard last time. I really mean that, Mike Batcher. You've blessed the coin commuting. Stick around. Okay, guys. You stay groovy. I'm going to go do my thing. See you later.